All right. A group of House Republicans uh, is pressing U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland for a status report on those who were arrested for their involvement in the January 6th riot at the Capitol. Between 500 and 600 people have so far been arrested and charged with crimes related to the events of January the 6th, but it's unclear how many remain in jail after seven months. Now, a, uh, a, a May 28th report in The Guardian claimed that at least 70 percent of the people charged in the Capitol breach have been released as they wait for trial. But we don't know. Multiple requests, even from members of Congress, for information have reportedly been ignored. And there have been reports claiming that some detainees may be suffering abuse at the hands of other prisoners or even guards. So why is the Department of Justice withholding information? Joining me now to talk about this is Congressman Louis Gohmert. He serves on the House Judiciary Committee, where he plays a vital role on the Crime, Terrorism, and Homeland Security Subcommittee, as well as the Courts, Intellectual Property, and the Internet Subcommittee. He represents the 1st District of the Lone Star State. Louis, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Tony, my friend. It's always good to be with you. Good to see you. Now, I, uh, I watched your, the press conference that uh, you and a few of your colleagues attempted to do. You wanted to do it in the Department of Justice. They wouldn't give you space. And then you had the, uh, the hecklers out there, all those who were always preaching tolerance, wouldn't let you all speak. Um, yeah. But the big yeah. thing here is you're trying to get answers, and you can't get them. What's going on? Well, it's been a very frustrating week. Uh, and actually, we have been writing letters to the AG asking to talk to him. Now, by this time, when Jeff Sessions was uh, AG, I'd met with him, I think, four times. But this attorney general apparently is only about uh, seeking to please the Democrats. He has no interest in being fair and judicious as the attorney general. It's really unfortunate. We've been begging for answers. Look, we just want answers. We're not looking into specific cases. We're just wanting to know, is it true about the abuse that's been going on? And the DOJ needs to tell us. It's part of our Judiciary Committee oversight to know, are they providing uh, evidence to the defendants so that they know, you know, whether to enter the plea agree agreement offered or whether um, there's evidence to support them completely being exonerated because the Supreme Court's made very clear if you have any exonerating evidence, any exculpatory evidence as a prosecutor, you have to make that available to the defendant. Well, Tony, there's 14,000 hours of videotape and all of that videotape with regard to the between five and 600, like you mentioned, uh, all of them would be able to know that, gee, there's evidence to show they're not guilty of what they're charged with. And there may be evidence of something they're guilty of, but you let them see it, and they have been nothing but crickets. They're just no response, and it is really unfortunate. Now, we saw that with Senator Ted Stevens' case. Uh, they wouldn't give him back exculpatory evidence, and it wasn't until after he was convicted right before his election, which he narrowly lost, and then one of the FBI agents, fortunately, there was one that had a conscience that signed an affidavit explaining about how they had set Ted Stevens up. They had hidden the exonerating evidence. They had made up evidence to uh, convict him. And of course, Mueller was the uh, FBI director at that time. And he rewarded the agent that, according to the affidavit, had falsified evidence to convict Ted Stevens. And they ran off the FBI agent with the conscience. So, Lou, I, I should have mentioned uh, in the introduction, you are a former judge in Texas, so you know a little bit about this. Not only are you an attorney, but you've been a judge. So let me ask you, do we have any idea how many are currently being detained? Well, in the D.C. jail, and, and actually it's part of the federal prison system. And uh, we went down there to talk to somebody. We've sent a bunch of letters 
Uh, we have been inquiring, how are these people being treated? How many do you have from January 6th? It, because they have some people, as I understand it, that have been completely convicted, finally convicted of crimes, and they've been sentenced to prison, and they're in there. And it's very clear, the law is very clear, you cannot punish someone that's in pretrial confinement. And so we want to know. We're hearing stories about how these people are being abused. We want to know. And we couldn't get answers. So four of us went down there today. And uh, we went in like the public can go in. I provided uh, our uh, congressional ID cards. Show uh, We're members of the Congress. Here's IDs. Um, we have oversight over uh, the Bureau of Prisons, and we're here to get a tour. We want to see how people are treated. Now, Tony, as a state felony judge, I toured a lot of prisons, jails, halfway houses. I've toured uh, uh, prisons and facilities like that since I've been in Congress. Never have I been treated like I was today at any type of detention facility. Heck, it, back in Texas, I'll still get invitations to come tour prison facilities, state, different ones. But here they stonewalled us and a um, lady in uniform came out and said that we were trespassing and uh, that uh, we had to get out. And I said, We've shown our IDs. We're members of Congress. We're allowed to be here. We we have to do oversight to know whether we ought to cut off funding for this facility or keep keep funding it. We need to know. It's, and we haven't gotten an answer, so we thought we'd come see for ourselves. And I said, where in the world did you get the impression we were trespassing in a federal facility? I said, I'm on the Judiciary Committee. We have oversight. And she said, well, my supervisor said you were trespassing. And I said, well, let's get the supervisor here. Well, she's coming. And so uh, another lady in uniform came. She had three stripes, a sergeant. But she went straight outside. She's on the phone. And I said, well, so where's the supervisor? And one of the other people said, well, that was her that just went outside. So the four of us went outside to follow her to ask for answers. And while we went out there where she was, she doubled back around, went into the facility and they locked the doors. I, I've incredible. never ever seen anything like this, Tony. It's unreal. That is incredible. Now, unreal. you know, if, are there any reports of those that are being held that are being denied bail? Yeah, there. Th those are reports, and that's what one thing we wanted to find out about. Uh, I do. I, I'd read before, like back in March, the 18-year-old kid that was held, and then I think he got shipped to a, a jail in Oklahoma. They play games with these people, shipping them around. But the pro federal prosecutor that's supposed to fight and defend the, the Constitution, he argued to the federal judge, look, you should not let this guy out on, on bail. You know, even though he didn't hit anybody, he's homeschooled. So we know his parents are a big part of his problem. So you just can't send this young man home. And anyway, I was appalled by that argument. But then the judge followed that recommendation, kept him in jail, and they kept him in jail till he got COVID. And then after he got COVID and was extremely sick, they finally let him go home. It is incredible, the abuses that are going on now, Tony. Well, we're almost out of time, uh, Congressman Louis Gohmert, but w what are the next steps? H how are we going to get answers? Well, we're going to keep pushing and if we keep pushing and of course there's their media sycophants but there's other media and and even schumer and durbin have asked uh, in recent uh, weeks you know are these people being treated fairly so we're making headway by bringing attention to this and we're just going to keep making noise until the the demands get uh, more people involved and they finally cannot ignore 
uh, the, the requests we have. So we'll see what happens, but we're not giving up. Well, keep us posted, uh, Louis, because we, we want to know what is happening. Appreciate the fact that you are out there asking these questions and, you know, going to uh, the, the lengths that you are to try to get the answers. Just keep, uh, keep doing it. We're with you.